food for you. How many times has Rob uttered those words, or the Italian equivalent, on entering this apartment? Peering towards the open door, he observes his younger self walk into the living room, tins weighing down overcoat pockets, a smile coating his lips. An allied airman bearing gifts, potent symbols of his nation's newfound status. Victor to vanquished, rations to help preserve life for a few when so many have been slaughtered in the struggle to liberate a city already battered by the retreating army. Savior a misnomer. He was simply a man overwhelmed by the stench of poverty and the consequences of interminable war, evident with every step he took on the streets of Naples. He had joined up to help defeat a ruthless enemy, convinced war presented the only possibility of restoring lasting peace to a fractured world. When did he lose faith in this mission, lose faith in his own ability to effect lasting change? Not the afternoon Luciano Zappetti offered his twelve-year-old daughter in exchange for one meal a day. Of that he remained certain. Doubts began to surface long before his transfer to Italy or even Tunisia, where for the first time he witnessed extensive bomb damage at close range. Almost all of Tunisia's major towns had been destroyed with extensive loss of civilian life during the six-month air and land campaign against German and Italian forces. No. A young British soldier, blinded during a desert battle, stirred the misgivings that led to an irreversible change of heart. They shipped the nutters out of here as soon as possible, the soldier said referring to the mentally disturbed patients kept separate from those with physical war wounds at the Desert Field Hospital, where Rob was treated for his initial bout of stomatitis ulcerative. Men who lost their minds somewhere in a godforsaken desert, the screams and wails heard that morning lodged forever in a corner of Rob's mind, grains of sand irritating sensitive tissue. The beginning of a second descent into hell, the sore swelling with every subsequent dogfight, flame and smoke blemishing pellucid desert skies, until he could no longer function as a competent rear gunner. His continuing survival no cause for celebration, only a reminder that cheating death did not absolve him from the sin of sending others to a Saharan grave. Not that he expressed such qualms to his superiors when questioned about his diminishing capabilities, preferring instead to focus on physical and mental exhaustion. This they understood. Few rear gunners still flying after three years of continuous warfare. Released from his dorsal turret, he prayed that doubts and guilt would fade in the busy atmosphere of a maintenance unit, but they persisted surfacing whenever there was a quiet moment 